Those levels, 4,300 once again in the spotlight. 4,300 points. We've seen uh, eight sessions above that mark now, and that's the longest run that we've seen since August last year. But once again, we have fallen below it. I guess the next uh, test is in the next session, and if we, the ASX 200 manages to get its head back above 4,300 points, we're, I guess the market will just think that it was a test of that 4,300 point level. But at the moment, we are under it, which is negative for technical traders. We saw the market down by 0.6%, and it was a very quiet day. Um, to the start of a shortened week, only $3.4 billion worth of stock being traded. So not too much going on, but a lot of data to focus on. And of course, it was the U.S. jobs, which really set the scene for our market today. A disappointing non-farm payrolls number on Friday, with 120,000 jobs being created versus an expectation of 205,000. And then the numbers coming out of China. We saw the inflation numbers coming out over the weekend. The new yuan loans, which was actually stronger than expected at $800 billion expectations was for $711 billion and of course today the trade surplus numbers which really dampened expectations around a rate cut in China. So unfortunately having a negative impact. Surprisingly, surprisingly the domestic data was strong. We saw ANZ job ads as well as business confidence and those numbers came out um, with positive numbers. All up in terms of sectors, though, gold did well. We saw Newcrest up by 3%, so that was a good news story. We've seen some of the strikes in India come to a close. We have seen our jewelers in India striking against new taxes, but that seemed to help gold prices. But all in all, if we have a look at the top 20, only three of them managed gains today, and that include Newcrest Mining, uh, Brambles, as well as Macquarie, which had a good day. But all in all, not a good day for the Australian market technically and in terms of performance, but an extremely soft day in terms of volumes. Yeah, it, I suppose in all the interest that gas and uh, I suppose energy has had, uranium to some extent has sort of been put to the side Lines, ERA Paladin 2 outperformers today. Do you see uranium nuclear power playing a, a role in terms of the investment attractiveness as people look to transition away from fossil fuel energy or is gas taking its place? If we have a look at uranium, it's one of the top bets that analysts have to outperform in 2012. And certainly we saw some good news finally coming through for ERA, where we did see production uh, forecast for ERA being tied into the upside, now predicting 3,200 tonnes to 3,700 uh, tonnes of uranium. And if we have a look at this range of pit, it is due for completion this year. So it's a matter of how much they can get out of this pit until it needs to be filled in. There's about 3,400 tonnes worth of contracts probably for ERA and of course if they can't get to that amount what we've seen in the past is that they've had to go on to market to buy um, in order to fulfill those sales contracts but really the key for ERA is whether the Ranger 3 pit is now proven to be economical to see if we do see expansion in that area because at the current at its current plans uh, and production for its current plans is just a, a matter of how much they can get out of the uh, that current project before it needs to be filled in this year. So I guess the production forecasts are being tightened. Good news for ERA shares today, but in terms of the future, we really want to see that Ranger 3 pit being proven economical uh, for some upside potential, permanent uh, upside potential for ERA shares. But in terms of uranium, there's been plenty of interest from China and India, and that's a good signal for the market. We've seen it in terms of Bannerman resources today. We've seen it in terms of the ex extract resources in the past. So it does look like uranium uh, should be well supported uh, from dem by demand from China as well as India and we've certainly seen that over the past few months.